Afternoon guys, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit cramped in here, um, there's, there's a reason for it, there's a reason for all this stuff, but um, I'll get rid of it all and I'll explain in a minute. See you in a minute guys. Right, welcome back guys. Uh, that little scene earlier was deliberate, um, obviously. So, why did I have all the stuff stacked up? It was to showcase that um, when you've been hobbying as loads of you out there obviously have so again no i'm not teaching you to suck eggs this is for people who are just going to be coming into the hobby um when you're hobbying you know you end up paying a lot of money um and having a lot of stuff a lot of bulky stuff that you need to store somewhere and everything um and i wanted to show what like a seasoned painter, a seasoned hobbyist, the type of materials that he go through. And then what I wanted to do then is um, just basically show any newcomers uh, to the to the hobby that you don't have to go to them extremes. They'll come over years and years and years. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. I also want to basically show any newcomers to the hobby um, the best way to save money and uh, sort of stack it into the hobby so we'll be going through that in a minute as well and the last thing i'm going to do um again i don't want to teach anyone how to suck eggs but i'm going to show how to create a wet palette because basically i've i probably only started using a wet palette the last year or so and i've been painting since 85 um so i'm extremely late to the the wet palette um Sort of like painting style and it's revolutionized my painting so if people are coming to the hobby now if if i can show you that and you can start using that straight away you're already going to have a foot up um so yeah this is basically going to be a guide to the best way to start collecting uh, armies and the basics that you need to just get you started right before i show you some stuff i'll tell you the reason why um i'm doing this I was going to do a paint tutorial and I will do this a paint tutorial today but I'll, I'll, I'll put it in another video um, but I'm not, I haven't been very well that's why well I know I look do dog rough normally anyway but I look even more dog rough today um, I haven't been sleeping well and when I was laying in bed last night um, I started thinking about things right I haven't got um, a dedicated painting area at the minute because my man cave is getting decorated so I've had a bring all my stuff down to a, a good light source um, and luckily I had stuff packed away where we'd been at the caravan so I'm clumping all this stuff down and I'm thinking god you build up so much stuff that you need for the hobby I've got so much money spent on paints and materials and I thought back to a situation that happened a few weeks back where I was in one of the warmer stores and um, a guy had come in uh, well, two two young young gentlemen, maybe fourteen or fifteen, and they um they were asking about the hobby and and you could get from the general gist um when they were talking to the staff member that they'd never this was a, their first experience of the hobby. They didn't have any from what I could pick up. They didn't have any paint materials, anything like that, and they were just asking in general what where's best to start, what's the hobby all about. So the the game workshop staff member really helpful and they went off to around the store, started having a look. Next thing they've picked up, I think they picked up a couple of box sets of not the star collecting boxes, just some basic box sets. Um, the store was the uh, GW staff member was talking to someone else at the time, another another um, you know um, person basically go to buy stuff. And he sold them the product, and they walked out the store, and um, they didn't have any paints, paint brushes, anything. So I'd sort of think to myself, well, have they looked at this box set? And um, <laughs> you know, they're looking at these beautifully painted, pro painted figures on the front of the box set, and think they're going to get home and um, basically open this box up and start playing with these beautiful painted figures. Um, and I felt like rushing out of the, of the shop and saying, whoa, whoa, but, you know, if they'd have basically told me to mind my own business, I'd have been a grumpy bear. So I just left it and it, it 
sort of played on my mind a bit, you know, I wish I'd, I really wish I had went out and said, fuck lads, you know, you, you have got paint and stuff and everything. So this is just, just to sort of like, if anyone is coming fresh to the hobby, my, the, the post will basically say, um, you know, um, basics to, 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 to start in the hobby of uh, Warhammer gaming. So maybe some people will come straight to this and it's just to help us out. So I'll have a sip of this tea. And we'll get started. So I'm going to turn the camera off, I'll pan it around and I'll show you the uh, hobby case I primarily take if I'm travelling anywhere. So one second guys. Okay, welcome back guys. So this is pretty much I would say two thirds of the, the items I've got for painting, basing and um, just doing the hobby in general. It's not the gaming side crafting and, and painting side and such so you've got part of your sort of like um, your basing material here and, and for doing things like uh, scenery as well a couple of sets of cheap brushes foliage uh, just managed to get all the Citadel skulls set there um, cheap paints acrylic paint bigger you know basically bigger bottles for a cheap price for basing large large areas or dry brushing large areas and such and um, let's have a look what else we've got in there all the different modeling flocks sands no more uh, no more nails you've got um, cheap PVO glue I've got a couple of different types of PVO glue cheap one there and I've got some GW glue there and somewhere I think it's in there I've got some um, Gorilla PVA glue so yeah there's the first box that goes in the car if I'm going anywhere for any length of time got a wet palette here and I've been using this for a couple of weeks now so it's well actually two months I've been using this so it's pretty much doing this one hand so it's pretty much need changing over so I'll be showing a wet palette when I change it over in a few minutes so yeah wet palette don't go anywhere without that now a sort of mobile bits box I'd said in one of the posts um, about when you get your sprues and things when you take your the minch piece off the sprues and I'd said don't get rid of things um, if I can open this up yeah I just cut, cut things up there and you know if you need bits of uh, girders and things like that that you might want to put on your senior bases they can all be chopped up then and they're great for just coming out of earthworks all the glues which are giving off quite a nice, nice uh, fragrance now um, we've got standard glues I've got a Gorilla Glue in there and an, another glue, couple of Gorilla Glues in the main case then you've got your plastic glues and such and white putty really good for fill, filling in um, basically it's the same as, as uh, green stuff uh, but fast drying really good for filling in uh, any sort of gaps in larger miniatures and things like that okay next we've got sta Stanley knives different types of Stanley knives flip out ones Clippers, finest, uh, like basically different. That's a flat blade standing knife. Sorry, um, that I use to. Um, I can sort of stick my thumb on that and carefully scrape along if I'm taking mold blinds up. Whereas somewhere in this jumble of stuff, I've got a, a finer one for getting right into the edges. Drills. That's actually got a lot of magnets on it as well, which is. Uh, basically when you want to magnetise things or if you want to pin things as well and the toothbrush just sawed it off a bit so it would fit into the into the tub and it's great for um, once you've scraped off your your um, mould lines sometimes you, as you as your seasoned um, hobbyists will know it's hard to get all of the, uh, the sort of 
scraped off uh, plastic off an inch or something so you know all toothbrush scrape around the miniature get all that uh, get all the gubbins out of the recess and such um, and then there's you know, spare um, drill bits and there's the spare um, blades for the for your standing knives and all that type of thing next thing you're going to need this is just forget about traveling this is what you're going to need in general eventually if you start taking a hobby serious mixing palette you're going to need some stuff for doing um this is for when you're putting weather in and um, sort of like uh, damage to vehicles and such wear and tear on vehicles really good for that um, and then i use a um you know porcelain plate glaze plate for mixing my um i use like basically a, a mixing palette like that i use for um building up uh watered down paint you know so basically you're gonna you should never go direct from pot to uh to miniature you should always water your paints down that's you know a a1 that's subject one lesson one always water down your paints uh, again i'm not trying to teach any of you veterans how to suck eggs this is for beginners so yeah so things like uh, you know these areas here or if you if you're trying to get um if you've got like a um something like this that'll that the, that the paint can run down into it can it stores there as you're mixing it and it's it's really handy but while you're trying to get the color something like this or a, a tile is ideal for for just mixing and mixing adding bits of water and finding that color that you need for your model so a couple of different types of um, palette and then if you're doing my wife's got like a sylvan army but if you're thinking of doing like large creature things like that this is one of the ways to save money um little that they're real twigs real stones that you you know if you go on the beach or you go on the forest pick them up and if you pva glue them it seals it seals them so you're not they'll basically stop rotting um so you can get them you can get things like this you can get from um pet shops i've got a big thing like that and all i did was cut it up and eventually i'll cut it up even more till it's well there you go little bits like that and you can just clip where you want stick them on the bases look really really good and there's all sorts in there and that's you know you just go to the garden center or something like that get yourself oh my son got me that um and that just that comes with me if i ever need a base or anything down the line you're going to need well pretty much straight away if you've got the money you're going to need uh, a base quarter there's all different types army painter uh, obviously citadel um and various other ones but you can also go to um like car shops halford places like that and you can get um like sprays car sprays you know for um doing body work to, to cars and things you can get various quotes for cheaper but personally i am um, i prefer to use these um so that's just my personal preference and then on to the main big bad boy so one of the things I would say is um, if you want to stay in the good books with your partner or if you're maybe you know a teenager or something like that, if you can get, it doesn't have to be as big as this because this is a fairly big uh, toolbox, but if you can get a little toolbox when you first start in the hobby and it's somewhere that you can put your paints and your paint brushes and you know your mixing palette and water um, sort of container and things like that. You're always going to be on your your wife or husband or partner's great uh, good side because you there's nothing worse if you haven't got a dedicated paint area than taking up i mean this is our dining table and i've i've only brought all this stuff down as, a, as an example but a lot of this will be going back upstairs but there's nothing worse than taking up uh, loads of space in the house with your hobby um, especially if you know maybe your, your your other half isn't into the hobby or your mum and dad Obviously, nine out of ten times I'm going to be into the hobby, but if you can keep it stuff stored away 
you're going to stay on their good side and you know you're going to have a hassle free hobby basically so get yourself a little small um, tool kit you can get them from probably get them from um, pawn shops and things like that I would imagine I personally got this from B&Q from a uh, from a, you know, one of, but you can get them from all, all over the place, especially the smaller ones. And just keep your stuff in there when you finish for the night. If you're going to be doing a painting over a couple of days and you say to your parents or your wife, whatever, look, can I leave, you know, I'm going to leave it out because I'm coming back to it tomorrow. But if you, if it's going to be over, I'll paint for a temp today and then three days time, just pack it away and it saves a lot of hassle. So this is mine. This is, I take the, this gets packed in the boot of the car if I'm going anywhere. And on the top there, again, just let's get this down. Just got bits that you need Gorilla Glue, uh, elastic bands for if you're um, doing like sub assemblies and you want to see how the miniature looks. Just some spare minis for if you, you know, you've got a free bit of time. Old Bretonian Lords there. Rods and such for um, if you need to pin stuff. And then uh, blue tack, blue tack's great for um, just getting if you, you know if you want to look how how your miniatures look and piece together. If you're doing um, magnetizing things, for example, that's great as well. So let me just make sure this all flips down and open the box up. So now this is what I was talking about about as you go through the years and you, you start painting. Lots and lots of paints in there. There's um, a good whack of money in there. You've got one section there, all your different brushes, you know, loads and loads of brushes. There's the uh, fine detail um, standing knife I was talking about. You're going to have your um, things for taking down mold lines and things like that. Crafting blades, um, and then you know you're going to have the water containers, um, more scenery stuff, tweezers for getting them out of places. I put some balsa wood in there, more paints underneath, and in here. Um, in a second, and here, this is the with great money savers. I've got Vallejo, uh, Vallejo washes, and they're great value. Then um, the only thing I'd say about them is it's oh, it's a very earthy, the very earthy washes. So if you if you're looking at doing something like um, Stonecast Eternals, I would actually go with the. Oh, I've got the name of it now. I've got it in here somewhere. Is it the Re Reekland Flesh? Or let me see if I've got it there. Uh, there you go. Yeah, the Reekland. Oops, sorry. Reekland Flesh shirt. If my camera's all over the place, it's because I'm using the. Uh, or the panoramic view rather than the the other view so I've got to get used to where the, the camera angle is now yeah so what I do is this is an old uh, Marks and Spencer's uh, hair bottle and if I'm going places I know I don't need something as big as as big as that I just fill this up and um, it gives a very earthy dull um, wash which is ideal for something like um, Death Guard or Nagel, things like that, really good. The only thing I will say about washes when you're getting them and they're going to last for a long time, just check the consistency of them before you um, before you apply it on the miniature. What I tend to do is pour some of it onto, like say, one of my onto the onto my plate, and I'll see if I need to thin it out uh, until you get that right consistency for the wash. Sometimes you might want a deliberate thinner wash. Um, than, than a thicker wash, or sometimes you might want a thicker wash if you're looking for really dark recesses and things like that. So just check your consistency. This is my son's dice, uh, that's just in there for whatever reason. Uh, 
So yeah. So I've showed all this. Oh, another thing as well. If you can't, if you're not lucky enough to be able to paint in daylight hours, which is the best time to paint, eventually, you know, if you can get yourself just a normal uh, lamp and stick a daylight bulb in it, um, when you're doing, it's not so important when you're just getting base layers on, but when you're putting detail and edge highlight and things like that, it's they come in really handy. So right, what I'm going to do now is pack this all up, and I'm going to show you what you actually need when you first start the hobby. This is years and years and you know there's tons of built up over the years this I'm gonna show you what you'll actually need when you first start the hobby. So one sec. Okay, so welcome back again guys. So this in my opinion um is everything you'll need uh to start um painting and assembling your miniatures etc. So we'll go through it in basic steps. Right. With this as well, um, let's try and save you as much money as possible. So, you don't need to go out and buy a water container or anything like that. This container's all over the place. This is, my son likes Maltese dipped in chocolate, so made a glass, why throw it in the bin? Washed it out, cleaned it, that is a perfect container uh, for your water. As long as you're not transporting it about because it hasn't got a, a screw on the cap. But if you're doing it at home, you know, if you're, you're going to, the best thing you can do anyway when you finish your session or a couple of times through your painting session is clean your water anyway. And especially after you've finished for the day or for the night, wherever, is clean it out, you know. But just start, start as you mean to go on. It's always good practice to, to clean your um, water gel unless it's a big vat and you know it's got plenty of uh, volume so it's not going to um, contaminate the water as quickly um, so yeah something like that won't cost you anything other than when you initially buy it for, for you know eating purposes or whatever um, right obviously you're going to need some mixing palette of any sort whether it's a tile or something like this that you can get from a kid's store. Um, sorry if I'm looking away. It's, I'm trying to learn how to look into the, into the actual little camera lens. Um, so yeah, something like that. That's that's fine. So you are going to need brushes, right? Whatever people think, good or bad about Games Workshop, for me, I think they do one of the best sets of brushes. Like I think you know, I've never sort of fell up, fell over with them. So. Really, you need uh, two brushes. Um, you can either choose between. You're going to need a base brush, and the new base brushes have got are pretty decent, to be honest, because it's got a, a flat edge, which is good for covering um, wider surfaces, and then the thinner edge if you need to get into more tighter spaces. Um, something like that as your base initial brush is fantastic. I can't remember what the retail at. I think it's. Might be four pound, four fifty, something like that. Um, or it might be cheaper. I'm not sure. Um, and then you can choose between either um, a fine detail brush or um, a standard brush. It depends on the type of figures you know you're going to be um, miniatures. You know you're going to be painting. If it's something like um, let's say for example a Nergal army, where you in, for me, when I'm going to be painting my Nagel Army, I'm just going to be splashing colours on. Um, there's not a great deal of detail that you need to, to, to get down on it. So, yeah, um, I would go for the base brush. I might even go for just the base brush and a, and a, and a bigger brush, to be honest. Um, and then I would, I would probably go for the base brush and the standard brush. Um, and then if I was putting something like, um, for example, um, know, let's have a look, let's have a think. Uh, something like the Elven Wanderers, you know, where you, you're painting quite porcelain um, features on faces and things like that. I would go for the base brush and the fine detail brush. As long as you've got a couple of brushes to get you by, that's all you need. And they'll do you good until you advance your level of painting and or you know you save a bit more money and you decide you want a few more brushes 
but a couple of brushes is all you need to start with. Then, me personally, I'd go out and buy something like a 99 pence set of brushes. Now, the reason you're doing these is, especially if you're painting vehicles and such, I, I've got Games Workshop like, um, wider brushes and such, but um, I'm currently doing some um, terrain for my son, and things like this, although I haven't used it yet, is great. Throw away brushes, or if you need to get a wide volume of PVA glue or something like that, so you, you, if you're dealing in um, uh, you know, packaging that, I can't remember the name, no, um, basically project, projective packaging, um, you know, and you're going to tear that up and use it for terrain, it's always good to do like a, a PVA or a no more nails sealant on them to, to stop it. Um, from degrading it, it like hardens it up a bit. So when you're doing wide, um, wide spreads of PVA glue, or even just basing your miniatures or things like that, these brushes, you can just use these. You certainly don't want to be using your good brushes, your painting brushes, for spreading out PVA glue or standard glue or things like that. So get yourself some cheap brushes. Another alternative is to things like uh, McDonald's cup stirrers. Um, but personally, I would recommend forgetting your PVA glue on your, your the bases, your miniatures, and that. Just get a couple of cheap brushes. Won't cost you much at all. Um, somewhere down the line, as well, you're going to want to get a dry brush. Um, the invaluable, um, just cheap and uh, cheats and tricks for making um, miniatures look really good and details really quickly so you're going to want one of them down the line as well uh, and then you need to get your figures off the bases you know they don't come in sprues so you need some clippers these are really old uh, GW clippers but you don't need although they do a really good range you don't need to go down the GW line or Hammy Pit line just go to your local um, like you say um general dealership, B and Q or you know, household dealership places and you'll be able to go into the tool section and get something for half or if not, you know, a tenth or a quarter of the price. They'll do the same job. So you need some clippers to get your minutes off the sprue. And when you are clipping them off the sprue, always clip sort of a millimetre or so away from the actual piece that you're clipping off because what it tends to do, especially if it's so you, you're clipping a, uh, a head off, if you clip close to the, the miniature, what it can sometimes tend to do is pull the the, uh, the the plastic away from the miniature and it can cause a, a crevice in the miniature. So always just clip a millimetre away and then when you've got your, um, your Stanley knife and such, you can just scrape or, or just finely cut any excess um, once it's off the sprue. So, Clippers, Stanley knife. I have a sun. I have two Stanley knives, but I get ones like this because, especially if you're a bit older like myself and you've got children, don't just get, um, you know, a standard assembled Stanley knife as such. I don't even know if they do them anymore, to be honest, for safety reasons. But always try and get something, especially for younger as well. A, make sure you can get your, your parents permission to get something like that. Your dad might have one anyway, he might supervise you while you do it, but stand your knife, um, get some spare blades if you can as well, and you're going to be using things like this to scrape away the mould lines, because when you get even the, the best, uh, you know, um, the best uh, moulded miniatures that GW or whoever do, you still, uh, you still tend to find um, the odd mould line, which you can just, you've got your standing knife and you just gently, very gently scrape it away. Just get the flat of the, of the, the blade and you just gently scrape, don't gouge in, just gently scrape away at the mould line until you know you scrape it off. And then if you've got an old toothbrush, just rub all that you know formed up uh, plastic, rub it off if you can't get it off by your hand. And also, if you've got a nail, if there's something that's been a bit tricky and you think it's going to damage the plastic, just get your nail. And sometimes you can just scrape away your nail and it's a lot less uh, intrusive on the, on the plastic. So, yeah, sandy knife, you're going to need that. 
you're going to need a plastic glue. Um, it doesn't have to be Games Workshop, like I say, but they do do a good range. They're quite pricey, but you're going to need this. So um, a plastic glue for most of the GW miniatures now, the plastic. But I would also just get yourself a standard super glue anyway, um, because once you've applied paint onto the onto the miniature, um, that that plastic isn't going to bond with each other. So somewhere down the line, you might be taking your hammer somewhere and arm snaps off. You're going to have the mold. The, the connection is going to have evolved, all, like already been created, so to speak. And you might have bits of paint in there, and you've got the the old glue that's hardened on the surface you're going to need your super glue and your plastic glue isn't going to work too well so just take that for repairs um, or also when you're gluing potentially heavy bits and bobs onto the, the base of the miniature like rocks and stuff like that so get your um, get some cheap super glue as well so then let's look at this so in case of Age of Sigma. When you're collecting an army, don't go in and um, just pick up the first thing that you um, that you see on the shelf. Go in, ask the retailer if you're if you're not sure if it's Games Workshop or wherever. Just ask them what's the best way to start an army. Uh, an army, sorry. And if if they're helpful, uh, one second. Uh, like I said, I'm, not, I'm not too well, so apologies for that. Um, if they're helpful, they'll, they'll send you to the, the, the best way, to, to, the cheapest way to um, to create an army. Now in the case of Age of Sigma, if you think they don't like Stormcast Eternals, we'll, we'll pick them as an example army. You're going to get the initial box set. Then if you've got a friend, um, you can split the box with them. Oh, but you get a load of stuff in there. Again, I've, I'm skipping over and over. I know you veterans know all this already. But to the starter, you get a load of miniatures in there. And then that's all you need to start with. So get yourself that. You've got your bits and bobs you need. And then pick up. And then what you need to do then is pick um, the primary colours that you're going to paint your army in. Now, if you go online, or I think this month's, uh, well, I know this month's games work, uh, White Dwarf has a, a colour a colour wheel in it um, so you could maybe cut that out and keep it safe um, or you can just go online and look for painting colour wheels try try and get two colours that complement each other so before you go in before you're going to start your army have an idea of what you think which army you want to collect there's plenty of things online uh, for which type of armies you know reviews on all different types of armies so think of the type of army you're going to collect and then look at what colours your um, your you might possibly want to paint your army. If you're doing forty k, one thing I w would suggest, um, if any of you have the uh, the old Dawn of War game, and um, they've got a brilliant army painter um, thing on that, and that is a great way. I've used it uh, to paint my son's uh, Tau and my own um, Crusaders, Spearsmen and Crusaders. Um, so yeah. Think of the colours that you want to use that are going to complement each other. And then when you go into the store, you've already got an idea in your head. You're not just going to randomly pick a load of colours. Because they are expensive, the paints are expensive, which you'll find once you start doing this hobby. So, work out the colours you want. And you can either go into places like uh, Boys, where they do um, uh, Vallejo paints. Um, or go to Games Workshop, or a lot of uh, general hobby shops tend to stock Games Workshop as well, um, and get, you know, your your um, the colours you think you're going to need. So, for example, bear with me, and I'll I'll show you an example. Okay, one of my son's Tau Warriors. I bought this. The I bought ten Tau um, Fire Warriors off eBay because you know try and get the cheapest deals you can um, you'll get good deals on eBay there's a lot of retailers as well that will give discounts um, especially if you buy in bulk um, there's a great place where I go I 
Brinton, uh, Mike Lancer Games, they, they get good discount. Uh, they're all over the place. So if you can find something cheap on the likes of eBay or, or, or retailers that'll give you a discount, get your army. Now I, with um, Jack's, the, we call these uh, the Oceans, that's the, the nickname for them. I, I used the Army Painter on Dawn of War and um, picked the two primary corals, red and blue. And basically, all I need to, to, to paint a Fire Warrior up is I picked a Prussian blue, I picked a Mephiston red, and then I got a Drakenhof Nightshade and Valesio Brown Wash, which, I, like I say, I've stored it in a more handy container, but you can use. Well, that's Devlin Woods, an old an old wash, but you can use the equivalent uh, GW current wash, um, and then things like you're gonna need if you're doing the uh, the lenses and such, you can just get the green. You're gonna need a white and a black as well, and the chances are you're gonna need something like a bulk. Um, I can't remember. It used to be called bulk of metal. Um, can't remember what it's called now, but basically a, a metallic paint as well. Um, and there, there, you know, that's all I need. Till, in fact, I don't even need that. That's all I need to be able to paint pretty much all of his um, his troops, and I use the red to just to highlight the the cloth. So with that, I basically just um, do the base layers. Also, sorry, you're going to need um, like a primer. So the best primer for me personally that you can choose is, is a black black primer or a white primer depending on the type of arm you're going to run. Um, get your primer on, get your base colours on and then make, keep it neat and then just basically um, wash what I wash the blue in the in the uh, the Drakenhof. I wash the reds in the Vallejo Brown and then I made sure I heavily uh, pulled the blue into all the crevices and everything and what it did was, it, what it does, it, I mentioned this before, because it's a much darker blue in the crevices and a lighter blue where I've kept, where I've, I've brushed off any of the, any of the uh, excess, it darkens the initial blue so You've got your dark recess blue, then you've got your standard blue, and then I bring up the base layer, um, water it down, bring it up to the raised areas. So it's almost like a three layer uh, blue, and that's 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 enough for me. That I'd like to think that's uh, tabletop standard. The green um, on the I don't know if I'll pick it one up, but the green all you know the lenses being done with the spot spots. Colours, same with the the gun sights. Unfortunately, the positioning was already set like that, so that's just I just painted it like that. But they come when I got them. They come. There was bits still attached to them, and I had to clean them up and repaint them and everything. But yeah, there you go. That's a, a tabletop standard. I'd like to think tabletop tank standard uh, tail miniature using. Those paints, free, you know, or cheap uh, water thing, water container, glues, and then your basic essentials. And once you've bought them, they're with you then. Um, you, you won't need, I've had that for, for at least 10 years. Um, you're not going to need any more. So, yeah, that's all you need, but. So do a bit of research, don't just go in and just grab any anything off the shelf. As I was saying with the, the Age of Sigma thing, so you bought your initial box set, you've got it painted up to the you know half decent standard, and then you think, right, I want to build up the army again. Now, if do a bit of research, ask around, you're gonna be able to find um hopefully you'll be able to find a retailer that, that gives a discount, or if not, you might find one on online. And you could potentially get um, 20 percent off. So, prime example, 
I've got bought the box set. Unfortunately, my wife and my son like to play the nice shiny goodly armies, but so do I, but they get first pick. So they've got me all the shiny stuff. So I get all the horrible, grimy, snotty goblins and uh, death guard and all the rest of it. So with in the case of my son, he got the Age of Sigma stuff. Next thing was, Stark Collection Box. So already, between the Stark Collection Box and the stuff that you get in the Age of Sigma um, main game, you're getting a, a fairly decent um, miniature collection together. Um, and then you might go out and say, oh, I want some more range stuff. So we bought him some duplicators. Um, and then look at the Blight War that's come out. Um, I haven't got my hands on that yet. I think we're getting that this week. And, um, the Blight War, you've got... Um, you know, some some uh, cavalry and things like that. So yeah, once I've got the Blight War, I pretty much think that's his army complete. And um, if you bought them all individually and you didn't get the stack, stop the stack collecting boxes, which are the best value you're going to get, full stop. I got that for forty pounds because I, you know, I went to a store that um, gave me twenty percent discount on it. I bought if I spent over a hundred pounds, it went from. 15% discount for 20 so we saved up um, and we went in and we bought a few bits and bobs and spent over £100, I think it was something like £105 we spent and saved another uh, 5% on the whole price so yeah, things like that are great ways to, uh, or going on eBay and things like that are great ways to save yourself money when you're initially building your army um, and then I touched on it earlier, this is going to be the last thing I talk about on the subject is the wet wet palette. So what a wet palette is basically is what you'll find if you when you initially like doing your uh, paint your armies up is especially in the summer, I mean it's not much of a nice day today, but especially in the summertime, when you're thinning your paints down, you'll get a lot of moisture evaporation. So your water will evaporate and your paints will dry out. So if you do something like this, a wet palette they're absolutely fantastic but I use this palette with the same water um, in in the bottom of it um, for five weeks five weeks in the summer and it was you know stuffy caravan and it, it, it was fine for five weeks so I'll quickly show you how to make one and it's cheap as chips again little Tupperware jar um, I'll take all this out now because Say, need replacing. If you are just clean up your Tupperware jacks, you might have been, you might have had picnics in it and all the rest of it. Clean that out. So, what you're going to need is scissors, paper towels, and some baking paper. Easy, like, easy to get hold of, cheap as chips. Get your um, paper towel. Now what I do is I look at the you know the the type of shapes I'm gonna need for the bottom of the tubble edge yeah and then I just turn them over and then just double it up on itself get it in there. Now a lot of people um, put the, the baking paper in and then apply the water. I don't think it makes much difference. Personally, I get the um, kitchen roll in there. Just go quite sparingly, you don't need loads of water. But put the water in there, just to give it enough moisture. Um, so you, you wet the whole of the um, kitchen towel and then just run it round just get it all in there and then what you're going to do is you're going to get the greaseproof paper now the way I do this is I measure it up against the actual 
um, Tupperware jar and then just do a little cut against the edge to edge area and then same again for the other end just do a little cut doesn't have to go slightly too much in you're better off being in a bit than out and when you cut you just create the cut there it's quite long and then that you need there, bang that in there, I would personally have it so the, the edges, it's, it's got a natural curve, right, so me personally I would have it so that the, it not, the, I'd have this part where it's wanting to curve in on itself, I'd have that on the flat of the, the top of edge jar, otherwise it's just going to coil up. And then there you go, that's it. And then just put a bit of water in if you're going to start mixing. But another little thing I would do when you're mixing, say for example, you're doing you put your base color green on the, the eye lenses, let's say you're doing it on a bigger piece, a, a vehicle or something, and then you want to use your white if you haven't got a lighter green to, to create the next stage of the lens, the, the lighter stage of the lens. Now what I would do personally is I would get your tile or your um, porcelain plate or even if you have to use just a standard mixing palette and I would I would actually create the um, the colour that you want, make sure you what you water it down really, create the colour that you want and then using your brush just get a decent amount of the colour you want using your brush, just bring it off your brush and just apply it into your palette because otherwise what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using a, quite a large volume of your palette to find the colour that you need um, and for me I would rather do that on really really intricate things where you you might be doing one model and it's a solo piece you're painting and you let's say for example a, a sword and you want to make the sword go from grade to grade to grade or a flesh tone on a on a cat um, a character piece then in that instance I would use the um, wet palette to just sort of gradually increase or decrease the, the colour in the palette but otherwise if you're just doing a standard mix for a block army I would get the mix in the palette like I say and then transfer it um, to the wet palette and then you just save you more space overall in your palette um, but yeah, so that's a wet palette and a Tupperware bit of uh, baking pa paper and some kitchen roll, and that's it. And that will keep your, your paints nice and uh, nice and uh, moisturised, basically. Um, don't forget though, don't think that because you put it, if you do put it direct to the wet palette, don't think that you still don't have to thin them down because you do, and that isn't, you know. Anyone who's who's done any type of painting will tell you, thin your paints. I'll save you on your long run anyway, and um, you'll just get a much better um, effect. Otherwise, you're going to get lots of um, you'll lose a lot of detail in the miniature. So make sure you thin your paints. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, oh, one last thing. Another thing that you are going to need. Sorry about this. When you can get yourself some PVA glue and some modelling flock and some like basing material, sand and such, just to, to finish off the model. I don't actually, I just apply that direct because I've done it throughout my entire 40k theme and it just means when all two armies are on the table with each other, it just brings a uni uniformality. I paint the rim of the miniatures brown and I just apply the sand direct with the um, modelling flock as well. 
So yeah. I hope that's going to save you some money in the long run, guys. And I hope a few of the tips I've given might um, help when you first initially start painting and help produce some decent miniatures for you. And yeah, that's it. I will be doing the rat razor back. That, uh, I'm going to be starting that in a minute, but I'll, um, I'll do that for another painting video. Waffled on again. It's a theme I'm probably do. Uh, I'm going to be doing all the time. I, I apologise. If there's anything you want to put there down below, please do, guys. And um, you know, if you want to subscribe and share, that'd be great as well. I'm, as I've said before, I really appreciate the support you have shown me. I am a complete noob at this. I haven't, I haven't done anything to do with cameras like this ever before, as you can probably tell. So I appreciate all the support and I. All I want to do on this on this site is just help you and you know so we can all be a community. It, it's really nice to share these things with fellow hobbyists. So yeah, all the best guys and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.